hello guys welcome back to my channel in today's tutorial i will be sharing with you the right way to cut your kimonos to avoid pulling them forward to get them balanced on your shoulders if this is something that you're interested in please keep watching for this project i'm working with a chiffon material some piece of ankara fabric and the front basic block The measurements I'm working with is coming up on the screen, so work with your own measurements. We'll be measuring to know how much fabric we are working with. The width of my fabric is 45 inches. The length is 3 yards and 25 inches. I do this for the beginners who watch my video. If you're not a beginner, you can use the timestamp and skip this part. So now that we know how much fabric that we are working with, I'll go ahead and fold the fabric widthwise. The 45 inches, I'll fold it into two first, then I'll go ahead and fold it lengthwise, making it four folds. The total length of my fabric on fold measured 66 inches and the width measured 22 and a half inches. This line will serve as my start line and I'll place my neck measurement three by three inches. I'm using this pattern paper to illustrate what I marked on the chiffon because my camera didn't pick the markings on the fabric. From the start line, I came down 2 inches for the shoulder slope and at the neckline, I went in 0.5 inch. You don't have to do this, but I encourage you to give it a try. This will give you a smooth curve running from the front to the back neckline and it will remove any sharp or pointy corners. This is what your neckline and your shoulder slope will look like as indicated by the arrow. From that 2 inch shoulder slant, I came down 10 inches for the sleeve opening. I measured the distance from the start line to the sleeve opening and placed the measurement on the center front to enable me get a straight line. On this line, I will place one quarter of my bust measurement plus additional 5 inches for ease. Some kimonos tend to be longer by the sides than they are in the front and at the back. So I use the basic block to correct this. I slash open the front dart, withdraw the dart legs of the bust dart to the bust point so that I can easily close it. I will place these bodies on the line where I mark one quarter of my bust measurement which is also the same line for the sleeve making sure the body is parallel to the center front and I will trace a line. From the start line, I will go down 24 inches for my hip level and draw a line. On this line, I will place one quarter of my hip measurement plus 5 inches for ease. I will also place the same measurement at the hem, that is, one quarter of my hip measurement plus the 5 inches for ease. I will connect the lines and draw in my neck curve. There is always a 1 inch or 1.5 inches difference between the front and back armhole level. But because this is a jacket cut together with the sleeve, I will be making this correction from the neckline. For the back neckline, I went up 1.5 inches, you can also use 1 inch, and I came down 2 inches for the shoulder slope. To mark the shoulder slope, I placed my tape at the 1.5 inches that I went up at the neckline and came down 2 inches. I will connect these two points and draw in my back neck curve. For the front neckline, from the start line, I came down 14 inches. My under bust level is 15 inches, so I marked 14 inches. At that point of 14 inches, I came in by 0.25 and I connected these points. I went ahead and added seam allowance for the front and the back and indicated our start line so that we don't get confused. So I'm just cross checking to make sure everything is okay. I connected the line from the slanted line down to the hem of the gown. I'm indicating the hem of the gown. Remember, this is an illustration. The seam allowance for the hem of the gown is 4 inches. 
I'll blend in all sharp edges before I proceed to cutting out our jacket. This is how your two panels will look. The one and half inch rays at the back panel will overlap to the front and give you the balance you need on your shoulders. I will go ahead and cut the rest of the fabric, make necessary notches and will move to the sewing part. For the sewing of this jacket, I use the French seam. The French seam is a good alternative if you are working with delicate fabric and you do not have an overlocker. I start by joining the front and the back panel first at the shoulders and I'm sewing on the right side of the fabric. I will trim down the SS seam allowance and I'll trim it close to the stitches so that when I turn it to the wrong side and stitch close, I will have a clean finish on the right side of the fabric. Chiffon materials are very challenging to work with, so ensure that you're using the right thread and needle to avoid threading and retreading. This is what your finishing will look like when you're done. It will give you that clean and professional look. Your seam allowance should not be more than 0.25 after sewing it close. The total circumference of our sleeve is 20 inches and here we have 21 inches which is perfect and the width of the strip of fabric I'll be using to pipe the sleeve is 5 inches and the length is the length of the Ankara 45 inches so I'll split it into two for the two sleeves I have attached the piece of Ankara to the wrong side of the sleeve with pins and I'll go ahead and stitch it. The piece of Ankara has been attached to the two sleeves. You can actually go ahead and finish off the hem of the sleeve by stitching it close but I added a lightweight interfacing to mine to give it a little stability. I used a very lightweight interfacing and pressed it on one side of the strip as you can see. I trimmed off SS seam allowance on the strip and gave my seam a very good press. I also went ahead and changed the threads from light lemon to a color that matched the piece of Ankara. Little things like this make your work stand out. I will go ahead and run a straight stitch and finish off the sleeves. I will trim off any excess, making sure I have my 10 inches intact plus seam allowance and I will go ahead and stitch close the sleeve all the way to the hem of the jacket using the right color of thread at each stage. I have stitched close the Ankara with the right color of thread. I changed the thread back to the light lemon to stitch close the chiffon. It is little things like this that make your work stand out, so do not feel lazy to do it when needed. Remember we used French seam for this project, so for this remaining part of the sleeve, I will stitch it close when I'm attaching the lapel for the front. So here is the lapel for the front all interfaced. The total length of my lapel measured 133 inches and the width measured 5 inches. I will attach it to my front neckline starting from the back and on the wrong side of the fabric. I have attached it to the back neckline with pins. I will go ahead and stitch it all the way around. The lapel has been attached, I will stitch it closed and finish off the hem of the jacket. Do not forget to notch curved corners at the back neckline and any other place to release any tension.
so here is our jacket done and dusted i'll go ahead and give you a closer view If you find this video helpful, please do not forget to leave me a thumbs up, share with your friends, comment, subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you guys for watching and see you in my next one. Bizu bizu. Bye.